Hello everyone, this is Brett Darian, and in this video, we are going to be testing the speed of this tape deck, the Kenwood KXW8050. Now, the reason you want to test the speed of your cassette deck is, you know, so you can have your tapes play back at the accurate speed, and over the years, the speed of your tape deck can change over time with belts and whatnot. So, the way that you would test the speed of a tape deck is uh, you have a tape that has a tone recorded on it. Usually it's at 3000 hertz. Sometimes it can also be 3150 hertz. But I think most people use 3000 hertz. And you play that back in your cassette deck. In this case, you play it back in both, of course. And then you hook up your line outputs to either a, a device that listens to that tone and then it'll tell you the speed uh, that the tape is playing back at, whether it's a drift, like if it's, the tape's playing back too fast or too slow. And it'll also give you a wow and flutter uh, rating which will tell you what the wow and flutter is. And wow and flutter is basically just the variances in speed, like if it's speeding up and slowing down, just the, just the variance in speed, um, which, can, which is pretty common with a belt, with a belt-driven mechanism. So that's what wow and flutter is. Um, but since a lot of people don't have that kind of device anymore, nowadays we use software, and you, so you can hook up your line outputs to a capture device, uh, you can also hook it up to a laptop or an older computer that actually has an, uh, some analog inputs on it. And then you start the software and that will basically tell you the same thing as an actual uh, device, like an actual machine that it does the same thing. It will give you the same rating. And that's what I'll be doing today. I'll be using software, of course, to do this test. Now, um, you can record your own test tone on your own tape if you want to. But the problem with that though is that your machine is going to have its own speed issues and wow and flutter. So the tone will be recorded with those issues. And then when you take that tape and you play it back in the machine that you're testing, you will then essentially be adding the issues of the device that you were using to record the tone on top of the device that you're using to test. So then you will get inaccurate results. So preferably you would go online and buy a, a legit original test tape like from TIAC or some other company like Sony and they will give you the best results. However, these test tapes are not common and they're also not cheap. So they will run you a good penny. So a cheaper alternative is to find a seller on eBay who will sell you their own test tapes that they make at home. And the difference with them is that they use high quality uh, tape decks to record their test tapes with. And while it's not as good as using an original legit test tape, you can still get fairly accurate results. So that's what I will be doing today. I went online, went to eBay, and I purchased this test tape from this seller. It was $25. And it has both a speed tone as well as an azimuth tone, which is basically the alignment of your tape heads. So it has both tests on both sides of the tape. In the auction description, he says that he uses a Nakamichi Dragon, which is essentially the Rolls Royce of tape techs. He uses the Nakamichi Dragon because the speed is fixed, it's a direct drive motor, and and the speed is set at the factory, so it should be a fairly accurate speed test. And at the very least, I should be able to match the speed of my deck to this person's Nakamichi Dragon, which surely that can't be a bad thing. 
So this is the test tape uh, when I got it in the mail. Um, the seller actually sent it in this anti-static bag, which is really nice. So then you open it up. And here is the test tape. And of course, he only uses brand new tapes for this. So this side has the 3000 hertz, zero decibel speed and flutter tone. And on the other side, we have a 10 kilohertz, negative 10 decibels for the azimuth adjustment. And in this video, I would be using this side, of course. And I also like that he uses 30 minute tape. So that means the tape is thicker, it's stronger, and will last longer. So this is how I will be conducting this test. So I simply have the line outputs from a tape deck hooked up to this easy capture device. You just don't use the video input, you just use the left and right audio inputs. And that's and this is a USB device, so I have it hooked up to the USB on my laptop. And then I have this software which will read the tone. And the name of this software is a software wow and flutter meter which is also this one right here you can download this for free online uh, though I must uh, give original credit to Techmoan for linking this software because that's how I found it but this is the software that will read the tone and this will be the wow and flutter reading and this will be and it will show the frequency uh, right here so if it says less than 3000 hertz, that means the tape is playing back too slow. And if it says higher than 3000 hertz, then it's playing back too fast. Okay, so let's begin the test. We will start with deck A. And we will insert the tape on side A. So we'll press play and we'll see the results. And these are the results. You can see here the speed, uh, the frequency is reading at 3073, which means it is playing back too fast. And the wow and flutter is not too bad, about 0.1213, peak is about 0.2. Um, now, you may be able to subtract like 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 from that because, again, this is also reading the wow and flutter of the person's uh, tape deck. Um, but overall, though, this, this wow and flutter isn't too bad, um, though it is rated for like 0 0.06, so that is a little bit higher than what the, uh, what the specifications of this deck are. All right, so we will now test deck B, and I think... This deck plays back a little slower, so we'll see if that's true. And it does, but it's still playing back too fast. It says 3,054 hertz. The wow and flutter is, it's about the same. In fact, the wow and flutter may actually be a little bit better on this one, slightly. Um, but yeah, so both of these decks are playing back too fast and you can adjust that and I will show you how to do that in a little bit. In case anyone's curious um, this is the speed results of the Sony Boombox CFD-S70 and it does play back slower than the tape deck but according to this it is still playing back slightly too fast which I was surprised about um, the, the, uh, the wow and flutter on this is a bit worse. The peak is about 0 0.3, and the RMS percentage is hovering about 0 0.18 to 0 0.2. And here is a speed test of the Victrola boombox, and it is playing back the fastest. In fact, it's playing back way too fast, uh, because it's reading the tone at almost 3100 Hertz which is way too fast and the wow and flutter is it's about the same it's about the RMS 
is about between 0 0.16 so it's actually not as bad as the Sony's so not too bad on the wow and flutter but the speed though is way too fast but unfortunately though, of course you cannot adjust the speed of any boombox okay so now I'm gonna show you how to adjust the speed of this tape deck now obviously the depending on what tape deck you have this process might be different um, but first thing you gotta do of course is open up your cover so you can expose the insides some tape decks have pods on the main board like this you know they're like little screws some of them have pods like this that adjust the tape speed but on this particular deck the Kenwood KX8050 or the W8050 and this will probably be for other similar models too like the 8040, 8030 maybe 8060 on this particular deck there are two screws or two pods on the top of this board here of each deck so this one has two screws and deck B also has two screws right here and these control the tape speed one of them controls the speed for high speed dubbing and the other one controls the speed for normal tape speed so here are the two screws the one you want to turn is the VR223 screw that is the one that controls the speed for normal playback the VR103 controls the high speed dubbing speed so I'm going to adjust the speed right now so once again we'll play the test tape so it's playing at 3074 so we will take a very small Phillips screwdriver and we'll stick that in the screw and we will turn it very slightly and you can see the speed is going down and we're going to adjust it see now it's too slow so I'm going to turn it back the other way very slightly very small adjustments uh, you don't have to have it right at 3000 and it probably ain't going to stay there anyways we just want to get it as close to 3000 as we can get so now we'll do the same for deck B put the test tape in we'll press play once again the speed is too fast so stick the screwdriver in this pod turn it slightly to the left and we'll see it drop that's pretty close right there about 3006 again it doesn't have to be perfect uh, just as long as it's close enough and it's definitely better than it was I also got deck A to adjust slightly better so now it's reading almost perfectly so that is how to test the speed of your tape deck and how to adjust the speed on this particular tape deck here if you're interested in buying a test tape like this from this seller I will link his store in the video description below in case you're interested in that. I was surprised to find out that most of my devices were playing back too fast. I thought for sure the Sony boombox was playing back a bit too slow, but it says it's playing back too fast. Uh, but again, this tape was recorded with the Nakamichi Dragon. So this test, uh, so the speed of this tape should be pretty accurate. So again, matching your speed to a Nakamichi should be pretty good. So, so I'm going to say this is definitely worth the $25. It's definitely much cheaper than buying a legit test tape. So anyhow guys, I thank you guys for watching. Please feel free to like this video and leave a comment down below. I read all my comments. And thank you guys for watching again. And I will see you next time.